What's up, grade 10 learners? This is Teacher Rosalyn, your radio teacher for today. And you are still tuning in to Radio Escuela sa Isabela, giving you the best lessons on air. Are you ready for another learning exploration? Yes, ma'am! Let's get it on! Are your learning materials ready? Oh, yes! Good to hear that! Now, sit back, relax, and let's make this day full of learnings! Before we proceed with our new lesson, let's have a quick rundown of our last topic. Can you still recall? Yes, ma'am! I'm glad to hear that! So, what have you learned? Nice! It's all about observing correct grammar in making definitions. To further check your understanding, let's analyze and answer some sentences based on the grammatical agreement of subjects and verbs as well as pronouns and their antecedents. Ready? Oh, yes! Good! Number one. The players of our team is, are, much faster than the players on the other team. Again, the players of our team is, are, much faster than the players on the other team. Your answer? That's right! It's R. Good job! Number two. Pablo, who has three dogs, run, runs every morning. Again, Pablo, who has three dogs, run, runs every morning. Your answer? Nice choice! The answer is runs. Number three. Nobody except juniors is are admitted to the course. One more time. Nobody except juniors is are admitted to the course. What did you write? Great! It should be is. Number four. Neither of the men looked as if he, they, wanted the job. I repeat. Neither of the men looked as if he, they, wanted the job. What's your choice? Wonderful! The correct answer is he. Lastly, number five. The police officer asked both of the witnesses whether he, they, had seen the killer's face. I'll read that again. The police officer asked both of the witnesses whether he, they, had seen the killer's face. Your answer? Good! The answer is they. How's your score? Were you able to get all the correct answers? Wow! That's great! Indeed, you understood our last lesson. Keep up the good work, learners! We now move on to our new learning journey for today. 
Have you heard of the word plagiarism? Well, it is a very common term in the field of research or academic writing. Since you are now working on your research paper, you have to be very careful not to commit this. Any idea why? Good guess! It is because plagiarism is presenting other people's work or ideas as your own, with or without their consent by incorporating it into your work without full acknowledgement. So, if the idea that you presented did not come from you, you must acknowledge its source or else you will be sanctioned. However, there is a way wherein you can avoid it. Do you know how? Precisely! It is through in-text referencing and reference list or bibliography. So, what are in-text references? In-text references or citations are used to acknowledge the work or ideas of others. They placed next to the text that you have paraphrased or coded, enabling the reader to differentiate between your writing and other people's work. The full details of your in-text references should be included in a reference list. So, when do we use an in-text reference? Any intelligent guess? Of course! First is when you use a long direct quotation, three lines or more. Second, when you use a short direct quotation, two lines or less. And third, when you use an indirect quotation by either paraphrasing or summarizing. What information do you need in writing an in-text reference? Take note because in-text references in the author date system should contain only the following information in this order. 1. The surname of the author or authors. 2. The year of publication of the text. And 3. The page numbers of the text. Usually, for direct quotations, particular ideas, and concepts. For example, Peterson, open and close parenthesis, 2005, comma, P, period, 31, states that, that is where you write the direct quotations copied. Or, a recent research study, open parenthesis, Jones and Jackson, comma, 2004, comma, P, period, 27, close parenthesis, reveals, followed by the direct and indirect quotations. Let's differentiate the in-text references used. Let's start with direct quotations. Care to describe? Great idea! A long direct quotation consists of the actual words used by an author. In the same order as the original text, in other words, it is a direct copy or quotation of 40 or more words which is separated from the rest of the text as a freestanding block and does not require quotation marks. Indented five spaces from the left-hand margin and use the same font size as the text with double line spacing. 
give page number or numbers as well as author and date. For example, language is subject to change, just as everything else in the world is. As at Chison, open parenthesis 1981 comma p period 16 close parenthesis puts it followed by your quoted text on the other hand a short direct quotation is inserted directly into the text without separating it from the rest of the paragraph Use opening and closing quotation marks and give the page number. And for indirect quotations, we have paraphrasing and summarizing. When you paraphrase, you write an author's idea in your own words, although you can use some of the author's own words as well. This is preferable to direct quotes as the reference fits more neatly into your own style of writing. It also shows that you really do understand what the author is saying. It is important to acknowledge the author with name and date. For example, one theory is given by Atchison, open parenthesis, 1981, close parenthesis, comma, who indicates that language is gradually transformed over the centuries and there is nothing surprising about it. Meanwhile, Summarizing gives an outline of the main points of a passage, chapter, or book. For example, however, at Chison, open parenthesis, 1981, close parenthesis, comma, whose seminal study looked closely at the psycholinguistic and sociolinguistic processes of language change, over many centuries, argues that changes in all aspects of language are natural and inevitable. Did you see the difference, grade 10? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. So, what's next after writing in-text references? You now have to write your reference list or bibliography. What then is a bibliography? Correct! A bibliography is a list of the sources you use to get information for your research or report. But why is there a need for a bibliography? Very good, learners! In academic writing, you must remember that it is important to give credit where it is due. A mandatory requirement of copyright laws and academic conventions is that whenever a research paper is written, there should be a section at the end of it where you acknowledge the sources used. Citation ensures that the information contained in the research paper is based on logic, truth, and facts. Absence of references or bibliography indicates that the paper may be a piece of plagiarism. Now, there are three standard citation styles used in bibliographies. Can you enumerate them? That's great! They are the American Psychological Association or APA, Modern Language Association of America, or MLA, and Chicago Manual of Style and Council of Biology Editors, or CBE. Did you take note of those? Yes, ma'am! Let's see! What are the initials again? 
right. A P A M L A and C B E. So, how do you know what to use in your research? Let's check them one by one. The APA style of referencing is common in social sciences papers. The MLA style, on the other hand, is used in the field of humanities. While CBE is a popular citation style in the natural sciences. So, do you know now what style will you use based on the research topic that you have? Yes, ma'am. That's great. So, what are the different sources that you can put in your bibliography? Absolutely. The sources may be in the form of printed and online books, websites, web documents, web blogs, newspaper articles, journals, podcasts, wikis, unpublished material, maps, and many more. All these references should appear at the end of your paper because it provides the information necessary for a reader to locate and retrieve any source you cite in the body of the paper. Different sources have different patterns in writing its bibliographic entry. Yes, I know it will be quite confusing, but let's take it nice and slow for you to understand. I suggest you take down notes so you won't forget. Okay! We will be focusing more on the APA style in this lesson because this is the most common style that students use. Now, listen carefully and take note of the basic rules in writing a bibliography. Number 1. All lines after the first line of each entry in your reference list should be indented one half inch from the left margin. This is called hanging indention. Number 2. Authors' names are inverted. Last name first. Give the last name and initials for all authors of a particular work for up to and including seven authors. If the work has more than seven authors, list the first six authors and then use ellipses after the six authors' name. After the ellipses, List the last author's name of the work. Number 3. Reference list entries should be alphabetized by the last name of the first author of each work. Number 4. For multiple articles by the same author or authors listed in the same order, List the entries in chronological order from earliest to most recent. Number 5. Present the journal title in full. Number 6. Maintain the punctuation and capitalization that are used by the journal in its title. Number 7. Capitalize all major words in journal titles. Number 8. When referring to books, chapters, articles, or web pages, capitalize only the first letter of the first word of a title and subtitle. The first word after a colon or a dash in the title and proper nouns. Do not capitalize the first letter of the second word in a hyphenated compound word. Number 9. Italicize titles 
or longer works such as books and journals. And lastly, number 10. Do not italicize, underline, or put quotes around the titles of shorter works such as journal articles or essays in edited collections. Whoa! I think we're having some information overload here. Can you still keep up? Oh, yes! Good! Now, just like what I said a while ago, different sources have different patterns in writing the bibliographic entry. Let's start with the most common source, which is the book. These are the things that you need in citing a book using the APA style. We have the author, year of publication, title of the book, place of publication, and the publisher. The author's name is Edna Montano de la Cruz. The date of publication is 2008. The book title is Ventures in Communication 1. The city of publication is Manila and the publishing company is Rex Bookstore, Inc. Let's start with the author's name. Last name, comma, then first initial followed by a period. So, Edna Montano de la Cruz becomes de la Cruz, comma, E, period. Followed by, yes, open parenthesis, publication date, and close parenthesis. This will become open parenthesis, 2008, close parenthesis, followed by a period. That will be De La Cruz, comma, E, period, open and close parenthesis, 2008, period. Then, the title of the book followed by a period. That will be De La Cruz, comma, E, period, open and close parenthesis, 2008, period, ventures in communication 1, period. What's next? Right! The place of publication followed by a colon. That will be De La Cruz, comma, E, period, open and close parenthesis, 2008, period, Ventures in Communication 1, period, Manila, colon. And lastly, we have the publishing company. So, the final and complete bibliography is De La Cruz, comma, E, period, open and close parenthesis, 2008, period, Ventures in Communication 1, period, Manila, colon, Rex Bookstore, comma, Inc., period. Easy! Right? Yes, ma'am. Would you like to try another one? I know you'd love to. Here it is. Thomas B. Allen is the author's name. The publication date is 1974. The book title is Vanishing Wildlife of North America. Then, the city of publication is Washington, D.C. And the publishing company is National Geographic Society. So, can we now proceed to the next? Okay! This time, let's proceed with the encyclopedia and dictionary as references. Here's the format. Author's last name, comma, first initial, period, 
open and close parenthesis, date, period, title of article, period, title of encyclopedia, it should be italicized, open and close parenthesis, volume, comma, pages, period, city of publication, colon, and publishing company, period. The only difference here with the book is the title of the encyclopedia and its volume and pages. In the New Encyclopedia Britannica, that is the title of the encyclopedia. Open and close parenthesis, volume, vol, vol, V-O-L, period, 26, comma, P-P, period, 501 to 508, period. Chicago, colon, Encyclopedia Britannica, period. Let's try a dictionary this time. Since dictionaries do not have authors, we skip the author part and start with the dictionary's name followed by the open and close parenthesis 10th edition for example period then another open and close parenthesis date of publication period that's open and close 1993 period next will be the city of publication colon, and the publishing company, period. Let you enjoying? I know you are. Can we now have another? Yes, ma'am. Let's move on to magazine and newspaper articles this time. The format is author's last name, comma, first initial, period, open and close parenthesis, Publication date, period, article title, period, periodical title, comma, volume number, issue number if available, comma, inclusive pages, period. Note that here, we do not enclose the title in quotation marks. Put a period after the title. If a periodical includes a volume number, italicize it and then give the page range in regular type without PP, period. If the periodical does not use volume numbers, as in newspapers, use P, period, or PP, period, for page numbers. Anna, do you still follow? Yes, ma'am. Wow, wonderful. Let's continue then. How about writing bibliography using web page or website? For an online periodical, here's the format. Author's name, period, Open and close parenthesis, publication or date of publication, period. Title of article, period. Title of periodical, comma. Volume number, comma. Retrieve month, day, comma. Year, comma. From full URL. Let's have online document. This is the format. Author's name, period, open and close parenthesis, date of publication, period, title of work, period, retrieved month, day, comma, year, comma, from full URL. Let's see then, how well you understood the lesson? I will be giving you the information or details and you will write the proper bibliographic entry. Are you ready? 
That's the energy, learners! Give this a try then! The author's name is Teresita R. Briones. Title of the book is Effectri Effective Drills in English Grammar. Date of publication is 2006. Place of publication, Santa Ana, Cama, Manila. And the publishing company is Vicarish Publication and Trading, Kama, Inc. or Incorporated. I'll give you one minute to answer. Your timer starts now. Your time is up! Let us check your work. The correct answer will be Briones, comma, T, period, open and close parenthesis 2006, period, effective drills in English grammar, period. Take note that this title should be written italicized. Santa Ana, comma, Manila, colon, Vicarish Publication and Trading, comma, Inc., period. Did you get all the punctuation marks and the format? Yes, ma'am. Wow! Excellent! Alright! I think you are now ready to face our final challenge. That is, creating your own 5 bibliographic entries based on the different sources that you used in your research work. But since this task is quite confusing and needs delicate attention, I will give you ample time to accomplish it together with the other enhancement activities on your learning activity sheet. Just make sure to finish this task before submitting it to your English teacher using a one whole sheet of paper. All right? All right. Wow! We are once again done with our topic for today. It is indeed a fruitful day for all of us. There you have it, learners. Thank you for always tuning in and for your wonderful participation today. I do hope that you continue to study despite many challenges. Your number one educational radio station Radio Escuela sa Isabela, together with our scriptwriter, yours truly, and the whole SDO Isabela RBI production team will always be here to guide you. This has been your radio teacher, Rosalind, saying, Always acknowledge your sources and say no to plagiarism. Have a great day ahead, grade 10. Stay home, stay safe, and until next time. Ciao! Patuloy! Patuloy ang edukasyon para sa ating generasyon. Sa daan ng pagkatuto ay walang may iwan. Kaya halina sa Radyo! Radyo! Radyo Eskwela!